Hey, what's up guys? This video is a little bit over an hour long uh, and that's just the way it's supposed to be. Okay, if we had to do this a second time, right? It's gonna be a little bit quicker. Now, if it took me, if this video is an hour long, imagine how long it really took, editing it and the whole line. So anyway, with that being said, um, you regardless, when I first got my hands on this machine, I was very excited because I have never got the Arians Auto Turn up close and, and personal, uh, especially one of these newer machines. So I started dragging out some of the other ones from our collection and giving you guys some side-by-sides, you know, comparison, and you guys can make some decisions, you know, on your own. Um, as far as maybe what you think the best Arians is for you. Also some upgrades that you could do to combine the new and the old. And, you know, just to also show you that a little stroll down Arians history as well. To show you how, what changes they have implemented and things that they've done. Um, and whether you want to agree or disagree with them, you know, that's entirely up to you. If you guys want to skip past all that, I completely 110% understand. You guys just want to change your belts. Then you guys can start at the 955 mark. Enjoy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to an episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today in the driveway is an Arians Deluxe 28. Needs no introduction. Um, pretty excited about this. This is my first time getting up close and personal with a newer Arians. Now, wait a minute. I'm a liar. Let me uh, show you something in case you guys are new to the channel. Let me show you my other new Arians we were talking about in our live. We're actually in talks with the Arians about this machine that we own. Thinking about converting this to a track drop. Oh, look at this baby. This Arians we started to build on the YouTube channel. And then we stopped because of lack of snow, motivation, and time. This is originally for a flip, but the Mrs. Pat Taste performance and I are thinking about keeping it and adding it to our collection. We'll be at number 13. Uh, and turning this into a track drive machine. It's a compact 22, originally thought it was a compact 24. So, all right, I'm a liar. And I've also had the compact 24. This is my first 28. This is my first one with the shoot handle rotation in the front. I don't know why Arians did that at all. I'll bring you to our OG Arians. Yeah, I'm trying to think which one I want to show you. You know, let's bring them all out. We'll do this one, and then the supercharged one. When we back this one up, I'll bring in our custom one that's still under project form. All right, so what do you guys recognize? <laughs> A lot of similarities, excuse me. Um, so anyway, so I don't know why Arians turned away from this. I'm sorry, where they turned away from this rotation to this rotation, okay? If you put a snow cab on your machine, right? The whole purpose of a snow cab is once you get the machine started, there is no need to cut out in front of the machine, to get out of the snow cab. Snow cab keeps the wind, and if you're blowing snow into the wind, keeps the snow blowing back onto the operator. Okay. I don't know why they did that. Let me show you, I'll bring out the supercharged one. But these new style of Arians is inspiration to me about my supercharged Hemi 420cc built Arians. It's heavy. I had to install, make sure you're in camera, make sure you're in view. I had to install this support right here for the chute housing. Now, let's get a rear view of this and look what would happen. If I had to try and replicate this build onto the newer one, we would run 
potentially into clearance issues. And my resolve possibly would be to straighten this out and extend it past here, but it looks like it would rub the gears. I would have to do some fabrication that I probably have no idea why. And this doubles down why Mrs. Pate's performance and I love this style generation. 12 out of our 14 snowblowers that we have in our personal feed and collection are of this style generation. Okay, we'll say goodbye. Actually, no, we'll say, we'll keep this here. Arians is the best snowblower out there. If something isn't fixed, if something isn't broken, why fix it? Arians is the true and tried attest to that system. Augers are still the same. This machine is about 15, 20 years old. Okay, buckets are, are a little bit similar in design. Gearboxes, let's talk gearboxes. A little bit different. This is an old style gearbox, but guess what? You can buy the upgraded gearbox for this machine. That is the last upgrade that we could do to this Arians when we're done with it. I was planning on doing a gearbox swap on this because when we went to go do snow removal, I was planning on this gearbox blowing, but it didn't. About three hours of runtime before something else went wrong with the machine. It's not the machine's fault, it's mine. But <sighs> the gearbox on the old Arians, shear pins are a little bit further out into the augers. On, on the new one, shear pins are closer in and the grease fittings are closer in as well. I don't understand why, but the most important part is, is that there are shear pins, I mean, I'm sorry, that there are still grease fittings in the auger system. We have the newer Arians here, the Compact 22. Okay, grease fittings are a little bit further out, like the 1128 over here, ours. So, just a couple of variations. No big deal. All right, let's, let's skedaddle these out of here. Excuse me. And then we'll go back to this one, the star of the show. This features the auto turn, which I do admit I am not a fan of. Um, I am not sure if Arians rectified their issues with it, but um, it is what it is. If you buy a higher end Arians, the auto turn is inevitable. It's a series of, of clutches to help with the auto turn that I am not a fan of. I like it simple. I like it cheap and cost efficient. Anyhow, look at this gearbox. Look at this, look at this baby. And also what I love about this gearbox is they added a support. Love the support. This thing is stout. This will 110% prolong auger bearing life for sure. Okay, three blade impeller, which is that guy all the way in the back. Uh, just a really, really solid machine. Oh, you know what? Here are our Arian skid shoes. And then check this out. And here are our armor skids. Game changer, okay? Our last live, we were, the Mrs. on we were talking about track drive snowblowers. And uh, just listen to it. That'll tell us what we think about tracks versus tires. Anyhow, let's get a side profile shot of this machine. Okay, to me, this has the most similarities to an 11 and a half 28 Arians of my generation, which you get the skinny tires 
and you get a their version of power steering where it's a, a bicycle handle that unlocks and unlocks the channel. You have your 254cc LCT engine. They've been using it for years once they to come someone out. Arians signed a deal with Briggs and they came with Briggs. Then something happened with Briggs and LCT came into play. LCT is the company that bought all the rights and stuff from Tecumseh, even though their engines are the farthest thing from it. Rest in peace. Miss them daily. Model number 921046, serial number 017965. Oh, and they also have the model name ST28DLE, as in ST2828 inch DLE Deluxe, L for the light, E for the electric start. They've been using the LE for over 10, 15 years as well. The DST for probably about 30, 40 years. The reason why that this is here in pieces is because the drive belt failed and they decided that they want brand new belts. They started to disassemble the machine uh, with the belt cover off and the belly panel. And then I think they called it quits from there. So we're gonna see what we're getting ourselves into. Uh, I'm not gonna start the machine because the belt is screwed up. I'm just gonna turn the fuel off in the off position and we're gonna turn this chute to the side and then we will, oh, here's another thing. Sam and Leo, you guys had this in the down position. No, when you guys store your snowblower, because it's a spring operated, always in the up position. You don't want to lose tension on that spring. Anyway, here we are in the service position. And I'm just taking a look of what we got. Here we go, here are the clutches. Ugh. Ugh. We're gonna service this machine a little bit too. This is our auto turn mechanism here. We did have a little bit of, all right, the friction disc has plenty of wear. There were some metal sounds that, that we were hearing. Okay, sticks. All right, let me just give you a nice little zoom on the. This is your auto turn system right here. There are a series of clutches in here that lock and unlock the differential. This was problematic. And I'm not sure if it still is. Um, we're just gonna avoid this for a little bit, for quite some time. You know, the first year anything comes out is problematic. So, you know, if anybody here with the newer earrings wanna chime in about the auto turn, please let me know. Chain drive, still good. This is where our friction disc rides. Like I said, while I'm in here, I'm just gonna do a little mini service on the machine. And then these clips should come off and we'll pull off the tires, grease the shafts for them. We're not sure if they have done it and we'll call it quits from there. What I like about this machine, it has a triple belt system. I am not sure if that comes from the factory from the Deluxe series or somebody added that on. Sam and Leo bought this second hand. So anybody else would like to chime in with the Deluxe 28? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. These are your auger belts. Your drive belt is right here. It's loose and caught. And I think we're gonna have an okay time doing this. Maybe we have to split the machine in half and maybe we don't. Okay, we, oh, we might have to do the dance in the sense where we have to just, if we're not gonna split the machine in half, we're gonna do the dance of where we might have to do, put the machine down, put it back in the service position as we go along. 
Now I'm just looking at the auger brake is here. And it seems like it's attached here. Are we focusing on the air? We're still focusing on the clutch. So let's go over down. Okay, and then let's talk about, because we have to move the auger belts to get to the dry belt. They are very smart. They bought the auger belts too. If you're gonna replace one belt, I strongly suggest replacing both. That's what I practice here when I talk to my neighbors. Okay, if one belt goes, we're replacing both. And we'll keep the other ones as spares. This one is not a spare anymore. This one will be used. He'll have some good used auger belts. But it seems like if we disconnect this, or you know what, we disconnect the spring, and this looks like it's on a, on a pin, then we could just flap this up and out of the way. So let's start with disconnecting this spring here. And let me get a good view. Yep, see that? Yeah, you guys can see that spring. Oh, so anyway, so to get the belly pan off, let's see. Because the hardware is missing. Belly pan cover is going to go like this. And we can see that these brackets, these stay on the inside of the machine. So let's acknowledge that. So you would have one, two, three, four, five, six. I would say anywhere from three eighths to a 10 millimeter. If it's a seven sixteenths, I'd be surprised. So I would start with a generic tool set to remove the belly pan cover and the belt cover, which is held on by two bolts, one and two. We only have one here. Anyhow, so let's get away with the spring and we're gonna try and just give that a quick yank. And then we'll see if this, this comes out. Yep, that's going to come out. You see how this moves? Or, yeah. All right, so what is that hooked up to? No, we're going to pull it off from the top. Fantastic. Okay, so for focus by this dirty black spot here, if you want to pay attention, this here is a drip pan cover for the engine. I'll zoom out and we'll talk about the drip pan. Yeah, you can see a little bit of it. See this drip pan right here? Lots of information I'm giving you here. This is to keep water from getting blown up, warmed up snow from getting inside here and throwing off the belts. Anyway, let's go back down. You guys could definitely see the spring right here this dirty patch right here. Let's undo the spring, which seems a little, oh, perfect, just like so. Okay, that out, and now we should be able to swing that bottom belt cover off. All right, belt cover off. Okay, so let's, we're going to bend this in and then this should come right out. There we go. And they, they supplied the belts. I did not order the belt. I usually don't like when people do that, but for Sam and Leo, we will talk about the belts. This apparently is Arian's part number 7070-6500 for the drive. Your double auger belt kit is 0720802. Oh, Arian's part number 7071440. As much as I love Arian's, um, I use Kevlar belts. Sometimes they're cheaper than the OEM part, um, but that's their call. 
made a decision. You can never go wrong with OEM. They bought them at Lowe's actually. All right, so now we have exposed our belts. So let me show you, well, I don't think we have to split the machine in half. You see this generous gap here? This is where we could move our belts in and out. And the same thing with our drive belt here. We could sneak it in. Oh no, we can't. Because this friction disc is in the way. Hmm. <laughs> because we need to get the belt over. We'll figure, uh, we'll figure something out. No worries. Okay. Let's see what we got for the pulley. Remember, so it's gonna be an upward dog and downward dog uh, positioning. All right, so let's get this down. We want to do a little bit of peek in here as well as something else. Let's fold this back in, make sure we don't crush it. That would be the, um, the belt keeper slash blade break. Okay, let's look inside here. We are definitely going to have to remove this belt guide right here. No big deal. So let's remove that. All right, so I already cracked these two loose. These are 13 millimeter or a half inch. I'm only using my Milwaukee ratchet to speed things up. Because this is going directly back into the engine, I will not be using this to reinstall. I don't want to strip anything out. So in case you miss stuff, you're looking at nut, lock washer, and then the washer itself. I'm just gonna put this in a bin so we don't lose it. And our belt cover comes right off. Now we can focus on getting these belts off, just like that. And don't forget, we need to get this one off too. It's gonna be a little bit harder. Let me get a flat blade screwdriver and we could work our way off. Okay, the fuel is off. I shut the key off as well, because we might be spinning this motor too, to help get these off. See how I pushed it? All right, we're gonna do the same thing. Let's see, can we, and you use the force of the engine to work the belts off. Oh, almost, almost, almost. It's almost like doing a tire. There we go. Auger belts are off. And here I'm just moving them over to the bottom of the machine. Okay, now, this is like yoga, yoga. All right, this is the freestanding position slash yoga would be downward dog. <laughs> and then we're gonna go to upward dog slash the service position. We're gonna do this multiple times. Okay, the spring fell off, not a big deal. We just need to remember that this goes up top towards the portion machine, see this long light, and this is at the bottom. So we'll put that there, and we'll swing you guys around. Do, 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 and we're back here again. And now we are able to slide the belt out. Both belts out. Now this one's gonna be a little bit trickier. This is the belt that's furthest out. So we're just gonna work it out and back in it goes. Both belts are out. Now the tricky part is this drive belt. We need to get it past this friction disc assembly.
I just just want to see something. <clears throat> This is plastic. I don't like that. I don't like it. What I'm trying to do is seeing if I could create space and slide the friction disc through. So what I'm gonna try and do now is pull the belt tight. Oh, perfect. You see that? Wham. I hope the camera caught that. No, the camera did not. All right, let's redo that. I'm gonna show you guys a little, little secret sauce right here. Let's see, can we move this? This is a clutch. So what I did is basically I put the friction, the belt tucked along the friction disc. And as we turned it, as I spun the wheel, see that? It came out. And look, now we're just gonna spin it. And the belt is out. Fantastic. So you do not need to split this machine apart. And use mechanical instinct off camera our drive belt is out. So now, let's start with the first drive belt. Same way. Stick it in through here. And we're just gonna work it in. Spinning the friction plate, and boom, we're in there like swimmer. Okay? Now, we are going to go back from upward dog to downward dog. Tuck this back in. Make sure we don't want to damage this. Make sure we have good access to this belt. Downward dog, we go. <clears throat> Here we are to the machine. If I am blocking you guys, I apologize. But we need to get this belt up and over. So let me, I could see the belt. I'm just trying not to get in your way. All right, All right you're in my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Come on, girl. Let me get a little pick that has a hook on it and I could pull the belt through. I just need to get my fingertips on there. It's 30 degrees out, so a little swollen, a little swollen. My fingers aren't as skinny as they, as they should be. There's our belt. Right there. Now the trick is, let's get it past this tensioner. So I'm pulling the tensioner towards you guys, and I am hook again. I'm trying to hook this belt past the tensioner. Okay, here we go. Over, over, over. Perfect. Now, see how we have it wrapped around? Okay, it's gonna suck about the tensioner part. We are going to fight that, but we're actually not. This tensioner is very simple but we might leave it for now because I don't like putting on springs. Springs get a little finicky. Okay, let's go to the, excuse me, 
upward dog position. And now we're back, and now we have a clear view of this auger belt right here. So now we are at the home stretch, it's on the top pulley. So all we need to do is make sure, see how this is nice and tight? And bam. Just walk it and spin this and we are good to go. Now what we have to do is put it in the downward dog position and slam this into the tensioner and then we can move on to the auger belts. Okay, so here we are here. And this goes here. This is very loose. Sam and Leo ordered the wrong belt. There is no adjustment on this whatsoever at all. So this is the wrong belt. So ignore my part numbers. I will get the belts for them. Let's see if they are right on the auger belt. So ignore those part numbers that I got. I will do the correct links. This is why I don't like when people supply their own parts. If this was a customer, they would have to pay again an additional labor charge for me to do this. It's not my fault, but keep forgetting the messed up. I think it was Sam who just graduated college, so, you know, this will go to your graduation gift. Okay, double belts here for videoing purposes. I'm probably gonna give this machine back to him and they could do the auger belt because I showed him how to do it through this YouTube video. So let's see, make sure you guys are on camera. Yep, okay, great. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're going to feed the beast a new belt. We're gonna go down into the machine, right through this opening. We're gonna slide it all the way in. Okay, and remember that this has two belts. So we're gonna do the front one first kind of loosey-goosey. Okay, you just try and want to get it on the pulley, the bottom pulley itself. If you can't, no big deal. We will align it once we get in. Belt number two, we're gonna feed it the same way. And go from there. Now with belt number two, what is a good practice to do is start it here. Because it's already, and we'll do that last. Downward dog position, no, upward dog, upward dog position again. Like I said, we're just gonna jockey back and forth. If you split the machine in half, you don't have to do all this, but there's nothing wrong with splitting the machine in half. Trying to split the machine in half and aligning it back again is a pain in the ass. I noticed this bar here, this is probably for an alignment bar, so to make it a little bit easier, but we're not. Swing out that belt clip. Okay, this is the forward belt, so let's position this forward. And you see how I'm spinning this to just get it into position? That's fine. Then let's get the first belt in, spinning it into position. Now, let's put our brake pad back in. Just to hold the belts. We'll do our spring last. So now it's going to stop the belts from popping back out at the bottom. Capiche? Capiche. All right. Downward dog. Downward dog. Rawr. Now 
Now we have our belts exposed to the top. Right here. Okay, and the same method that we use to put these on is the same method that we're gonna use to, to I'm sorry, take them off the same method we put them on. You see here how this was perfect? Now what we're just gonna do is put this on here, slide it on here, and turn the engine by hand. And boom, we're in there. I'm not gonna run the machine because this belt is the wrong size. There is an adjustment for these belts. Here. This is all the way out. I would like to move this in just a little bit. So these belts kind of, even though they didn't pop off on their own, you don't want them to pop off on their own. What I like to do is adjust these as much as I can right before the machine, the auger starts spinning on its own. All right, so. You have to put your covers on, but we're not gonna put the covers on because they're gonna have to do this all over again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we're gonna start to grease this machine. Because I like Sam and Leon, because I like Arians. Okay, upper dog position. We're gonna start with these clips here and probably the finagling of my fingertips. And we actually need to get to, for this grease fitting, bastards, what a crappy design. Okay, so there goes that. Can we slide this off? Yes, we can. Now I do see a key window. I see an E-clip, which is fine. Okay, great. This tire, is off, there is rust here, and there is, oh, and there is no grease or anti-seize or anything in there. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other wheel, right? I assume it's gonna be very, very similar. Let's pull this off, okay, great. Keyway out, keyway out. Let's put the keyway over here in the rim. And here, now we have access to our grease fitting, which is right here. So I'm gonna get my wire wheel, my safety googles, and I like to polish my shafts. Polish. So let me get, the, let me get that sorted out. All right, so I'm just gonna show you guys how to do the one side. I'm gonna polish this shaft. I always like to polish the shafts. You don't have to. This looks like surface rust. I'd, if you wanted to scrape it off, scrape it off. I'm not. I don't like doing that. That uh, seems excessive and a, and a lot of work that is not necessary. So <clears throat> inside here is the valley groove for the keyway. You know, let's do that. Let's get all this rust out. this by hand. Okay. And I'm gonna do the other side real quick. Excuse me. All right, so we have our nice polished shaft. Yes, I am wearing gloves. You guys never see me wear gloves, but we're gonna be using a lot of anti -seize. Um If you don't wanna use anti seize grease will be fine. I just like anti-seize better. And we're gonna paint this on like John Ross. Bob Ross, Bob Ross. John Ross is another 
excellent. You forget it. Forget I mentioned his name. I might edit that guy out. It's not that type of channel. So let's get this in here. All right? We're gonna paint this thing. I, I, I can't stress this more than enough. Paint this on here, right in the keyway hole. Do not be cheap about anti-seize or grease on this part of the machine. We're gonna put some on the outside because there's that E-clip. I mean, I really can't stress this part more than enough, okay? Thank me years later down the line when you have to repair this machine. Do this every year. You hear me? There is a keyway slot here. Hopefully the camera picks up. If not, just match this slot with the keyway itself. Okay, remember, oh, ooh, 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 there it goes. There it goes. Here we go. And come on, stay in. Stir in. Stay in. I'm applying pressure from the back of the keyway and sliding the wheel on. Okay, we're in. And we're just working this in till it catches. Like so. And now we could put our clip back. We could slide it into its happy place. Come on. Oh. Come on. Watch. In front of the E clip, dummy. Oh, we passed it. Here we go. Okay, boom. Tires in here. Oh! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, ah! Oh. What did I forget to do? What did I forget to do? Yeah, see how easy this is? That grease fitting right there. Let me turn on the old compressor and we're gonna grease that grease fitting, but I'll give you the inside shot and I'll show you what it lubes. All right, so this grease fitting lubricates this sprocket, the shaft that this sprocket's in. Come on. Uh-oh. Have a little bit of an air leak in my compressor. Scheiser. <laughs> it's literally the line that connects to the compressor to the airlines, the intermediate line. It cracked. Just wear and tear. It is what it is. There we go. Hopefully this is enough. See that pump? All right, good. So I am just going to pump this until I see grease come out the other side. And we can see it because it's blue. And that's all you want to do. And then <clears throat> there's excess grease. Let me turn off my compressor and disconnect the line. The excess grease that comes out on the other side, on the outside. <laughs> We're going to repurpose, right? All right, so we saw grease come out of here. This grease right there we're gonna to use to lubricate. Come on, come on. Man, you guys, my hands are greasy. My hands are greasy. See this, not this shaft, this shaft here, that the friction disc rides on. 
look past. There's going to be a shaft there. Okay? Just take your fingertip with this grease. There's a lot. A little bit too much. No, put it on the shaft. Okay? And we're just going to, just like that, put it on the shaft, work its way around. Leftover grease, I'm just putting on the sprockets and we'll, we'll do that around. So you see now we're just going to take our finger, work it up and down, side to side, inside this shaft. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our gear shifter and we're going to switch speeds and we're going to move it back and forth. Now we're going to put it to the opposite end and then we'll do the same thing here. Lubricate this shaft. And then now our excess grease again. I just like to do this. This is a chain. We'll lubricate the gears and the sprocket. And then as this works its way on, we'll put the tire back on now officially because we've greased everything. And then we're going to give this a spin. <clears throat> All right. Key shaft lined up. You guys could just observe. Observe the inside of an Arians while I do this. Here we go again. Here we go again. All right, maybe not. It's going to take a little bit longer. This keyway is a little tricky, and I don't think I can get you guys a good shot because it requires me being in your way. This is the crappy part about this auto turn system because this keyway needs to go in here. Like so. Remember I have to support the keyway from the other side. Let's line this up. See, I'm holding the keyway in from behind, and let's slide this keyway in. See that? Oh, come on. Here we go. Now we're in. There, like swimwear. And now I'm going to take the other end, push this in, and then now our clip can officially go on for good. See you later. Love you. Bye. Let me just wipe this grease off. All right, now let's see. We'll bring our attention back to the sprockets with this auto turn. Can we spin this? See that? Yeah, there we go. We're going to spin it and we're just going to work this grease around. That's all we're doing. See how it's kind of like stretching and flexing? That's what you want to do. That's what I like to achieve. Mission accomplished. Now Sam and Leo, owners of Arians, check this out right here. What is this bolt? Huh. See this here? This gets tucked inside there. He didn't have that tucked in there. Right here. Do you guys did not have that tucked in there? I'm gonna to look to see where that nut came from. Alrighty. And I see's here, wheel is on. I'll see you when I see ya. Alright guys, so so that's it for now. We're gonna wrap this up. They could handle the rest. Usually, you know, once you put all the belts on, right, you would start the machine, test everything to make sure it works. And remember we talked about the adjustments, you know, on the pulleys. If the adjustments don't need to be made, then don't make them. Sometimes in my experience, um, it's best to do adjustments probably before or during when you blow snow, because that's when you get a feel for the machine. There have been lots of times where I have people um, get a snow blower do belts or and or they get a brand new machine and they're saying that it's not throwing as far as it should 
and then what you do is that's just a simple belt adjustment with the pulley and you bring it in just a little bit. That's some testing that we can't do due to lack of snow, but we can try and eyeball it as best as we can. That's what a normal repair shop would do. And that's what you should do yourself. If you want to fine tune it, then you're just gonna have to wait to snow to hit. But for the most part, if you follow my method, when you try and get it to the closest point as possible, okay, on the machine, for it to not spin while it's operating, then you really don't have to make any adjustments whatsoever at all. Remember, this is what you want to adjust here as fast as possible. I'm really bummed out about this belt. Oh well. Oh, we gotta put our spring back on. A durr. Let me split, let's put the spring back on. Ah, just when we thought we were done. I wonder how many of you guys were screaming towards the end. The spring! The spring! I hope you guys don't sound like that. Alright. <sighs> Upward dog. Upward dog position. Golly. Alright, let me take my glove off. That's covered in anti-seize. Okay, spring. Oh, we gotta do the belt cover too. That's why I keep a, a bucket full of parts. <clears throat> Remember, the spring went like this. So that's how we have to do it. So remember, it hooks on the side. So we need to All right, let's pull this out. Oh. Out. Brake pad out. Okay, we need to get the spring here. I don't remember it being this way. Because <laughs> we need it to twist. Did this spring twist? There we go. There we go. That's the magic. Make sure we guys get that. Oh, we got to go down. Sorry. That's it right here. And then I'll back you guys out a little bit. Slide this in. Keep it facing towards the front of the blower. Push this in. Okay. And then we're going to have to get a pair of pliers. And we're going to have to pull... this guy through. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. We'll just walk you through it. So the reason why we don't have the machine on the downward position, because we're not gonna fight gravity. If we put it down, then the gravity is gonna take the spring towards the bottom of the machine. So we're gonna keep it on its side. I am looking for the spring. Um, I see you. I can feel it. <gasps> see, this is something that you might have to pull. You have to take the auger pulley out. Tensioner. And get it, but let's see. I think I could see it. Yep, I got it. All right, we're just gonna pull and put it right back in the hole there. And now we have the tensioner 
for the auger. Okay, what else? Oh, and the belt cover. Ha. Downward dog for the last time. And then remember our belt cover has to go back on. All right. They are almost home. Slide that back into place. I don't know. I think this is the wrong belt, but that's just me. Because even if we put this down, you see how we have tension? There's just not enough. There's just not enough. This is supposed to spin all the time. And with that being as loose as it is, it's not spinning anything. Now you see this is very important. I'm putting anti-seize here because this bolt is steel and the engine is made out of aluminum. Because there's two different types of metals in contact, it will rust. Notice I'm starting it by hand and I'm going to finish it by hand as well. Do not, say this all the time, do not take your gun and go crazy. This Milwaukee is 35 inch pounds. I'm not gambling on this. It's not my machine, and even if it was, I still wouldn't gamble. My hand. And a little snug. That's it, quarter turn, that's it. That's it, get it snug, quarter turn, send it. Snug, quarter turn, boom, that's it, done, locked in. Belt cover goes on, they're missing the hardware too, so it is what it is. Please guys, in the comments, be kind and generous to Sam and Leo. Without them, this video would not be possible, okay? So that means we would never have the experience of going the depths of inside of a newer Arians Deluxe 28. Okay, we would also not have the opportunity for me to show you guys how to do your belts yourself without splitting the machine. Okay, I show you guys how to service the auto turn and the steering system. Okay, and then I also showed you why you don't let customers bring their own belts. Because now we're going to have to have a heated discussion and say why they owe me more money on top of the original estimate because I have to do rework because they gave me the wrong parts and I need to order the right ones. My saying is with this, and I learned this at the repair shop when I swept floors for the repair shop to help me with repairs for my cars when I was going to college. Okay, they had a sign basically saying that they do not take outside parts, right? Uh, that sign came up after they had a guy who replaced his alternator three times because he got a defective alternator from AutoZone. Here's that they put up a sign that you are not allowed to supply their own parts. In a nutshell, it's like you go to a diner with your own eggs and ask you to make them breakfast for you using the eggs that you brought. So with that being said, I am going to sign out. Um, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. I did. I, you know me. I love, I love getting my hands on a machine that I really don't have a lot of hands-on experience with. But as you guys see that if you work on one machine or two, transitioning to a different one isn't that hard at all. All right guys, so it's day two, unfortunately, because uh, customers supplied the wrong belt. So I just would like to let you know that Customer supplies parts, which I do not do. For them, I made an exception. Um, 
If I have to do the work again because it's the wrong part, they have to pay for it. So Sam and Leo, you guys are gonna owe me a small little fee. I know I said this would be a free repair because uh, you graduated, but this took a little bit longer than it should have. So anyway, um, small fee, no worries. Anyhow, existing belt, the old one that we took off, and here is the new one that I ordered. We're good. So I am not going to take you through that journey all over again. Uh, I'll see you guys when it's all done. Oh, hey guys and gals. And there is nothing in between. Science. Anyhow, this is all done. Wasn't too bad because you know what? When you do it twice, it's the easier it's easier when you do it the second time around. So, what can I tell you, right? Not as bad as we thought or assumed. I am just putting on the last finishing touch and that is the belt guard. <sighs> See how I'm not using no power tools? Hell no. This goes right into the block. You do not want to strip out your block. I cannot stress to you that more than anything. You are taking a very simple repair and turning it into something complicated. I just want to steal a few things off this. <laughs> well, let me, uh, let me show you. All right. So can we see the difference? Can we see the difference? The belt is not loosey-goosey, so we know it's good to go. I want to show you one thing from a distance, okay? <clears throat> I am going to, I, I, not Sam and Leo, anybody else, I am going to be putting the correct part numbers for this machine in the description, okay? This is the belt that came off, and this is the belt that they gave me. Can we see the difference? So they could return it. And now we can verify that it runs. All right, so this is the first machine that I've had hands-on with the auto turn system. So I don't even know how to, how to operate this. Um, the auto turn system in its early stages was very faulty. So, I still don't like it. I don't know if it has improved. Honestly, I could care less. Oh, one more thing, that's important. I think it's important for us that want to upgrade our machines. I gotta look into it for mine. This drip tray. See, it stops the snow from coming back in and dripping down into the drive belt. Anyhow, let's give this thing a rip and let's take it for a spin and hopefully my camera could pick up what I'm saying because this is my first impression of the auto turn. You couldn't try it out before. So here's the cool thing. It's, it'll sense when you're turning. See how I can pivot the machine? And then it locks when you want to go forward or backwards. So pretty cool. A little complicated. There's a series of clutches in there. Anyhow, let's give this thing a spin and let's see what we got. Hopefully you guys could hear me. All right, come on. Full power. Let's check the belt. All go. Yeah. Okay. Now let's check the drive. We are going to go in one speed, speed one. Look at this, we're moving. Okay, let's turn. Now okay, we'll pivot. Okay, let's turn. Let's pivot. Oh, look at this. One hand. Ah, uh, but you see how it's jerking? Now right, let's try with the auger lock. Let's try in reverse. We'll do speed one. 
that's pretty fair. Me too. You always want to choke it. You always want to choke it before you don't. I don't like the auto turn. Anyway, Sam and Leo, remember, they just gave it to me in pieces. They didn't give me the existing hardware. So, oh, I'm going to put the belt cover on. But the belly pan is missing. If they do not have hardware, they must let me know and I will get it for them. All right, guys. So, tell me what you think. This is a multi layered video. Okay, we covered. Oh, this is what I don't like. Sorry. You see this here? This sucks. This is your auger lock. Why are you reaching over? Why are you reaching over to turn the chute? If anything, they should reverse it here and then you have nice and easy and fluid motion. Tell me what you guys think. That, that's just my personal opinion. Okay, I still don't even like that the handle is here. On my Arians, on our Arians, all of our Arians in our collection, 12 of them, the handle sticks out the back here. That's where it needs to be. If you would, if I was to put a bigger engine on this, woo -wee, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I think it would hit. So I might have to shorten this up or maybe extend it past here and figure it out because that's what this is all about. This would be, uh, one heck of a project to repower with a 420 um, just because of, of this right here. I'm thinking, just eyeing it. Okay, remember, I was an idiot because I thought I couldn't do a 670 and I actually could have, but I wanted to keep it stocked. That is for the next project. Keep your fingers crossed. We're gonna have some two cool Arians projects, maybe two. Uh, they're big, they're two big what ifs. Um, one's gonna be converting one to a track drive. And then the other one is we will be finally, hopefully, sinking the deal on this elusive Arians. If you guys are new to the channel, then you have to go back and watch. That the missus and I have been looking ever since we started our collection and I found out its existence. It has, I've had it in my fingers, but I had to let it go due to price and condition. This one isn't as bad but uh, I've had nothing nice to say. I can't say it all. It's about the seller. I actually kind of sort of know him. So it's, it's kind of tough, a little complicated, but we shall see. Time is on our side and it is not on his. So we've only had one snowstorm this year. Uh, Mrs. Pat Taste Performance still thinks we're going to get another one. I think we're one and done. So that's another thing we're not too hard pressed to do, but I want it. We're going to get it in some short um, in some sort of shape or form. I am toying around the possibility of buying one and maybe just swap putting an engine on it. But then it loses its, I don't know, just something that I want. And uh, when you guys do this to the extent that we do, you're allowed to treat yourself and take care of yourself, right? So that's what you guys should be doing, right? The money you saved by doing these belts, take the wife out to dinner, take the kids out for ice cream, invest it in the stock market or in cryptocurrency, right? Do not send us anything. Better yourself, because that's what we do here. All right? So with that being said, if you guys found this video helpful, which you should, because it's multi-layered, what, what did we learn today oh, over these past couple of days, right? how to replace the belts, okay? We also learned what happens when you let customers supply their parts. Okay, so my camera ran out when I was trying to do uh, the end of this video. So I'm trying to remember where I left off, okay? We were talking about, as me and Mrs. Pat Taste Performance absolutely appreciate and love when you guys give us fantastic feedback on our channel. Don't send us anything, please. I can't stress this more than enough. I really, really can't. There are other ways to 
support us that don't involve you guys sending us money or things in general. I can't stress this more than enough that whatever you take from this channel, okay, take care of yourself. Nobody will take care of you better than you. Or take care of those that you hold dear to your heart that can't take care of themselves or that take care of you, right? Take the wife out to dinner, kids the ice cream, a coworker who you who absolutely adores you, loves you, family, father, mother, anybody. Or buy yourself a machine that you've always wanted, right? Nothing wrong with upgrading. Buy yourself a $1,500 rear bumper. You know what I mean, okay? Take care of yourself. Or invest it. I cannot, I can't double, I can't say this anymore. Invest it. Stock market, crypto. Now's a fantastic time to uh, invest. We are. We are. And we're doing good. And that could be you too. Alrighty. If you guys want to pay us back, if you guys want to pay it forward to us, this is what we'll ask of you, right? Because this is how you compliment us. We like reading comments, but if you want to kick it up a notch, right? Take a short, brief little video with you and your machine or any project, because we do more than just snow blowers and mowers and stuff around here, okay? Do a little outro. Smash the like button, smash the like Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Patek, right? Or do something else. You could be in an intro, or I could just smack you right there in the middle of the video. Because I can. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. Later.